let's talk about answering the grid-in questions. First of all, there are a few types of answers that if you get them, you are wrong and you need to go back and redo the problem. These are negative numbers or negative answers, numbers greater than 9,999, or irrational numbers like pi. So if you get an answer like that, go back and take a second look because it's not a possible answer choice for your grid-in questions. Now let's talk about what you can do. Fractions don't need to be reduced if they fit into all the slots. Decimals don't need to be rounded. You just fill in all the slots. You don't have to put a leading zero on your decimal answers. What I mean is this zero in front of the decimal point is called a leading zero. You don't need it. You can just start with your decimal point and fill in your numbers. Now, this is probably the most important one. Mixed numbers must be written as a decimal or as an improper fraction. So let's say your answer is three and a half. If you grid in three, one, dash, two, the computer will read it as 31 over two and you'll be wrong. Instead, you have to grid in 3.5 or 7 over 2. And finally, you can fill in your answer choices from either side. I personally like to go from left to right because that's how we read, but if you feel that it's absolutely essential to your identity to go the other way, you can do that too. Just be careful, if you have decimals, you need to fill in all the slots. Let's look at this problem involving linear functions. The coordinates of point A in the figure above are P, R, where the absolute value of P equals one-half the absolute value of R. Which of the following could be the slope of A, B? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is use process of elimination. The slope of this line is negative because it goes down and to the right. Thus, answer choices C, D, and E are automatically out. If you were running out of time, you could just guess and move on. But we're going to continue. Now, I want to use another technique, which is replacing my variables with numbers, because I have variables in my problem. And it tells me the coordinates of point A, which is right here, are P, R, where the absolute value of P equals one-half the absolute value of R. So I'm going to make R equal eight, which means P would equal four. Now, if I were to write this up in its actual coordinates, since it's in this quadrant, my X value is negative. So it would be negative four, eight. And now I need to find the slope. I need a second point, but I can use this point right here, which would be zero, zero. And my slope is rise over run. Or I can write it like this, the difference in y's over the difference in x's. My y value, it would be eight minus zero over negative four minus zero I get 8 over negative 4, which gives me negative 2, and my answer is A.